Hello Aviators, Sky here. Today we are returning to the MAX Air Show, and while the gorgeous airliners are rising to the sky, and fighters capture the attention of guests, we are sitting in a car. Obviously, to pull my attention away from aviation, an ordinary car wouldn't be enough, so we are hanging out in the coolest sedan produced in Russia, the firstborn of the Cottage Luxury Cars project, the Aorus Senate. One of the most expensive cars that will be sold in Russia, collection of the best solutions that could be created and acquired, as well as of course the dimensions. It is very large, but quite usual for the top luxury sedans. Due to such dimensions, the interior turned out to be very spacious. By the way, most of it is made in Russia. Some of the power plant elements and systems are developed in cooperation with the European companies, but the interior wood, leather, metal elements, all of it is made by the domestic producers. Also, there are very soft mats on the floor, such as, you know, when you open the door, get into the car with your dirty boots on and feel guilty. In the front, there is a full set of digital devices, everything as it should be for serious guys. The trend of automotive industry nowadays, transition to the glass cockpits. I'm just waiting for limos with Honeywell and Garmin interfaces, should be interesting. The name Aorus comes from the merger of Aurum, which is gold, and obviously Russia. And so we get Russian gold, with according prices. It's nice to know that this is not just a prototype, assembled by engineers in a lab, but a series machine. The flagships of politics are already rolling around on these flagships of automobile industry, and soon they will become available to slightly more ordinary people. Of course I'm not an expert, so I won't be talking too much, but still, Everything about this car is good, except for one drawback. It doesn't fly. After all, we are on a large air show. Maybe the aviation industry will please us with something interesting. And here on our stand, by a total coincidence, next to the Aorus Senate, we see Aorus Ansat. Of course, it should be noted right away that this is not a rotorcraft version of a limousine, but rather a limousine version of a helicopter a new VIP modification of the Russian Helicopters Corporation product. ANSAT is produced in Tatarstan, and from the Tatar language is translated as simple, and this name is perfect for it. From the very beginning it was being created as a fairly simple, multi-purpose helicopter, designed to work in various missions and be quite competitive in the market. It belongs to the light helicopters class and is quite classic in design, a four-blade main rotor and a tail rotor. In the industry, it can be compared with the models like the B429 or Airbus H145. Naturally, it was built to be universal and now acts as a platform for modifications. Cargo, passenger, rescue, medical and so on. And of course, like any multi-purpose helicopter, ANSAT has a VIP option. The choice of this particular platform is quite obvious. The helicopter is already being produced and has proven itself well. Dozens of these machines are already flying in the sky. Let's get acquainted with the VIP option. Ilyazov Maxim, управляющий директор предприятия Авиаконцепт. В кооперации и под эгидой Ростех, вертолета России и в ГУП НАМИ совместно с компанией Авиаконцепт разработали оригинальный конструкции интерьер, который является продолжением линейки марки Aorus. The idea of making a common VIP cabin for a car and a helicopter in principle is not bad at all and allows to unify the elements as much as it is possible for an automobile and a helicopter. In theory, this will expand the Aorus model line on one hand and give the VIP modification of the helicopter a recognizable brand on the other. Moreover, such a solution can increase the mass production of some elements and materials, maintaining quality while cutting the costs. The Senates and the Ansets are not particularly cheap and mass products. One of the main executors of this project on the helicopter itself is the Avia Concept Company. This team specializes in industrial design, special materials and customization. In their field, they are the masters, who already managed to work on various airplanes, cars, even spacecraft, and of course helicopters. They contributed to some design elements, cabins and coloring of both the cute civilian birds, such as the Ka-226 and Ansat, as well as the angry predators, such as the alligators Ka-52. The concept of the Aura Senate is in principle quite classic for luxury sedans. So, what did they decide to do on a helicopter? 
Идея всего этого интерьера заключается в том, чтобы разместить комфортабельно 5 пассажиров, два из которых vip пассажиры и три пассажира сопровождения. В салоне реализована конференц-связь, система шумоподавления. Есть возможность общения с кабиной пилотов при вызове кабины пилотов. Задача и концепция интерьера – это обволакивающее пространство, так называемый кокпит, для главных пассажиров. Нам удалось это сделать, получилось очень эргономичное пространство, удобное и с точки зрения функционала, и с точки зрения эстетики. Мы постарались сделать так называемую кабинетную классику, я думаю, что это получилось, и как раз это продолжение линейки марки Aurus. Так называемая лонг-версия, которая сейчас эксплуатируется нашим президентом, отразилась здесь. Это является плавным продолжением и первой ласточкой в области авиации линейки марки Aurus. Let's get to know this cabin closer. The enveloping space. A rather decent internal volume of the helicopter allowed the engineers to basically integrate an isolated VIP cabin into it. Access to the cabin opens through two large sliding doors, which were also modified. The design was developed jointly by Russian helicopters, NAMI, the producer of the cars, and Avia Concept that eventually built it. And the quality of work is actually surprisingly high. All interior elements are either modified for this cabin or created specifically for it. As a result, everything was done very well. No defects, cracks, creaks or other things like that. Unification also partially works. Most of the supplies of elements are Russian, and some of them are already working on the Aorus cars. Of course, they couldn't make everything the same. After all, the requirements for helicopters and cars, including their interiors, are quite different. Someone of course can say that the cabin is completely new, it'll get worn out over time, and the operator will have to spend a lot of effort on repairs. But it is worth saying that the engineers who worked on it are no beginners. The materials are selected in high quality, and they did not forget about maintainability. The interior is made in a modular scheme. All of its elements are specially prepared and don't require additional adjustment. During maintenance, if necessary, all the damaged parts can easily be replaced. Of course, like any helicopter with a VIP cabin, there has to be some cool feature in here. ANSAT has special windows with electrochromic smart glass. The passenger sitting near the window can darken it by pressing the button and, if necessary, make it translucent. In aviation, such features are already applied. For example, Boeing likes to boast of such windows in the 787 model, but it is a wide-body, long-haul, $300 million airliner. For a light helicopter, even in a VIP configuration, this solution is pretty awesome. In addition, there is a couple more features that are not so obvious. The VIP cabin has a very advanced sound insulation. ANSAT is an easy-to-operate helicopter, but the rejection of many complex mechanisms increased its noise. Here, the sound insulation allowed to reduce the noise level in the cabin by 20 to 25% in comparison with the basic version, which increases the comfort a lot. Meanwhile, the helicopter's restrictions for the loading mass and its flight specifications limited the capabilities of engineers. This is not the flying building Mi-26. They couldn't just squeeze in a couple of extra tons and a couple of extra cubic meters. But the task was completed. The VIP cabin set, with all the materials, devices, cables and insulation, weighs only 130 kilograms. As a result, ANSAT has all the features of a VIP transport while retaining its flight performance. They also did some tuning in the cockpit, but here everything remained in a more or less familiar format, without any special VIP applications. This is, after all, a pilot's workplace, there's a lot of rules here. On the other hand, the acclimation and operation of a helicopter will not involve any exotic applications, which simplifies and reduces the cost of work. So here everything is quite familiar. A set of tools, cyclic stick, collective lever, everything's in place. The helicopter is equipped with a partially glass dashboard, but a set of classic instruments is preserved. This, by the way, is a conservative solution. Ansets with a full glass FS are already being certified. Machines remain simple, but are developing quite actively. Of course, there is no limit to perfection. Since ANSAT began working with VIP cabins recently, some of its structural elements have not yet been adapted for them. The fact is that the cabin of the basic ANSAT occupies almost the entire volume of the fuselage, from the pilot seats to the cargo doors. 
In the VIP version, in the rear of the cabin behind the main passengers, there is additional equipment that occupies part of the space of the basic cabin. As a result, the second pair of windows is unnecessary, no one is sitting there anymore. And most of the floor in the luggage compartment is now a door, so loading is complicated even though there is a lot of space. Not to say that this would be a problem, and it can be solved with a minor modification, but you know, I had to find something to complain about. So, let's try to compare the two machines. Well, comparing a car to a helicopter is of course a strange thing to do, but maybe we can dig into their technical specifications. Let's start with the car. Oros Senate. More than 2.5 tons of 5500 pounds of metal, electronics and expensive materials are included. Moreover, its heavier versions can reach 3 tons, and armored models over 6. Anset Oros is limited here. In aviation, such games with masses are expensive, but still, this helicopter is not the lightest. The maximum takeoff weight is 3.6 tons, or nearly 7900 pounds. What's next? Power plant. The limousine is being pushed forward by a hybrid power plant, composed of a 4.4 liter 598 horsepower V8 and a 62 horsepower electric motor. Just check out those keys, I used to have a phone that was smaller than that. Ansat here of course has a gloating smile. It also has two engines. Two Pratt Whitney PW207K turboshafts, 558 horsepower in normal mode and 630 on takeoff. And this is not for the entire power plant, but for each of the engines, so just multiply those numbers by two. Due to this couple, the helicopter can fly at speeds of up to 250 km per hour, or nearly 155 miles per hour. Jump to heights of up to 4800 meters, or almost 16,000 feet, and fly at a distance of about 500 kilometers, or 270 nautical miles. Curiously, the Senate's maximum speed is about the same 250 kilometers per hour. The range is better, it is easier to refill a car than a helicopter. But Ansat wins at flight altitude, the Senate's practical ceiling about 1.7 meters. And the main common feature of both models. These are not singular prototypes created just for demonstration at exhibitions, showing on televisions and making videos on YouTube. The cars are not exhibits at all, they are already in use, so far in limited quantities, but they're waiting for the start of more massive deliveries. Same thing with Ansat. The base helicopter is already in series, and the one with the VIP cabin is made in accordance with all the requirements of aviation authorities. Its certification, with further transfer to the operators, is a matter of time, and not very long. So the car and the helicopter can compete, which one of them enters the open market first. Potential customers were not wasting any time. At the Max Air Show, the stand was constantly occupied with an endless string of chiefs of all types from Russia and other countries, who were lining up to look at a couple of new machines. The ANSAT helps promote the Senate, and the Senate helps promote the ANSAT. Okay, I think that's enough leather seats for today. The story of the two Oruses is just beginning, we'll see what kind of continuation it'll have. Thanks to the guys from Avia Concept, NAMI and Russian Helicopters for their help and consults. Successful work, luxurious flights and soft landings to you.